Okay, thanks, Chairman. And ladies and gentlemen, now in China, it is uh, Spring Festival Eve. So according our Chinese traditional custom, I would like to say Happy New Year. <laughs> and uh, the title of my presentation is the Dynamic Conservation of Agricultural Heritage. I would like to share some experiences from China through the case study in Fuzhou, <coughs> Jasmine Tea Culture System. There are four parts of my presentation to introduce how to revive agricultural heritage in my country. There is a new concept, GS, Globally Important Agricultural Heritage Systems. We all know that more than 10,000 years of agricultural development history provided very fruitful and ingenious traditional knowledge and experiences, which reflecting the evolution of the human humanity and the nature. In 2002, the FAO uh, sorted for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, initiated a new international friendship named the Conservation and Adaptive Management of GS. Generally speaking, these traditional agricultural systems are important for the provision of local food security, high levels of agricultural biodiversity, stores of indigenous knowledge, and the adaptive management systems. Up to now, there are about 31 GS sites located in 13 countries. Agricultural heritage calls for dynamic conservation, emphasizing a balance between conservation, adaptation, and social economic development. We are not going to create museums. We would like to support sustainable modern agricultural development. Because the GS is not about the past, and the GS is about our future. And its aim is to support livelihood and economic growth, to support the eco services, including biodiversity conservation, to support indigenous knowledge and cultural diversity conservation. And the key is to benefit the local farmers. However, Many traditional agricultural heritage are under threat and even are disappeared. Thus, how to revive this traditional agricultural heritage to contribute to the modern agricultural sustainable development? I'd like to take the Fuzhou Jasmine Tea Culture System as an example. Like this picture, the landscape of this system is very beautiful and it has shaped a vertical landscape in an order of tea plants, trees, buildings, jasmines, and waterways. Jasmine tea is smelled, scented, and the method was first invented in Fuzhou. It plays an important role for livelihood security and providing various ecosystem functions for the regional ecological safety. Although the history of Jasmine cultivation and the Jasmine team process in Fuzhou is over 1,000 years, along with the urbanization and the lower price, the system is under threat. We did some surveys there and the feet and the left figures so that there are about 68% uh, of the farmers are over 55. Many young people would like uh, living in the cities and working in the factories. And uh, the German plantation areas sh decreased sharply from the early 1990s to the, uh, the early 21st centuries. And uh, the local people are like 
of in-depth research and development of products, and the low recognition of the importance of agricultural heritage. Thus, to streamline the efforts in the view of the rebirth of the system, a series of actions about production, environment, culture were taken at the local level to promote the production development. The local makes a series of the broaches about the techni technical regulation and they trained the parents frequently and to encourage qualified companies to apply for geographical indication and organic products. Meanwhile, the inspection and the detection system, which are important, has been set up and improved to enhance the super supervision of agriculture inputs to realize the source control and a program to build the famous tea brand has been launched by TV, newspapers, and other media, as well, as well as in exhibition. And uh, to protect the environment, a lot of engineering are, are carried out, including the soil and the water conservation, and uh, the wetland system and the forest system restoration and to protect natural habitats for biodiversity. Thirdly, to discover, collect, protect, development, develop, and utilize the traditional knowledge and culture, the government and the experts did extensive investigations, including the jasmine tea, the jasmine cultivation, the traditional equipment, the process method and the tea culture and the jasmine culture. After this investigation, a database and an agriculture heritage exhibition room was built and the intangible culture heritage mechanism was established. Finally, there are a lot of international and national conferences held in Fuzhou every year to promote the Fuzhou Jiaomin Tea uh, uh, more and more famous, such as the annual forum on Jiaomin Tea culture and so on. Thus, in return, the Jiaomin Tea enjoyed higher popularity and the market value. Both the price of Jiaomin Tea and the farmer's income increased and the gap between the rural and the urban areas become narrow. And becoming a genius, strengthened the locals' awareness to protect the environment and to protect the traditional culture. The participation of multi-stakeholders play an important role in the rebirth of agricultural heritage. The stakeholders can, divide, can be divided into three categories, uh, including the government actors in the international and the national and the local level. Second, the social actors, including research institutes, universities, experts, NGOs, and uh, the media and the consumers. And uh, thirdly, the economic actors, including the farmers, the enterprises, and other businesses. Thus, this table introduces the main task of different stakeholders in different levels. For an, ex for an example, in the local level, the local stakeholders contribute to agricultural heritage conservation by local innovation and knowledge developing pride in traditional culture and natural resources management. And meanwhile, as a technological and economic reason, the local needs some support, such as the um, capacity building, the local empowerment, the payment for ecosystem services mechanism, and the market access and the development. Thus, the government 
play a leading role in China because the government in China is very powerful. They can develop or uh, enhance the policies and legislations, standardize management, organize imply and its implementation, and so on. And the broad, broad participation Participation of scientists from different subjects are also very important. They can, to, they can discover and assess the values of the heritage to study the sustainable mechanisms and to assist in planning development. And more important, to combine the traditional knowledge with the modern technologies in management and production. And there are some papers about the GS published in Nature as a cover paper, and also in PINAS. The communities and the farmers are masters and the direct participants of the agricultural heritage conservation. They are the main bodies of culture, inheritance, agricultural production, and the market operation. And also, they should be the major beneficiaries of outcomes from the heritage conservation. For example, in Fuzhou, the local communities hold jasmine tea culture festivals to display the history, the folk culture, the landscapes, and the art relating to jasmine tea. And the enterprises play an important part in developing products and markets. They can increase their capital investment and they devote greater efforts to expand the market and the brand publicity and promotion by the capacity management improvement and the organic publication basis setup and the uh, eco-label certification. The media and the citizens and NGOs play a role in raising public awareness to make the agricultural heritage conservation one of the main streams in modern agriculture sustainable development. And finally, to balance the heritage protection and the economic challenges, we try to find some sustainable development approach. There are three approaches in China, including to establish compensation mechanism for ecological and cultural protection, to promote eco-cultural agri-products, and to develop eco-cultural tourism. The product approaches reflects the core value of agricultural heritage, as if there is no agricultural actions, it will, be, it will not be agricultural heritage. And the compensation approach is important when the market is not mature, like the transition from conventional to certified organic, organic production. And the tourism approach may be a simple and effective measure for economic growth in many developing areas. All the approaches seem simple. However, to make it effective, there are a lot of work to be done. We take the PES, for example, the PES payment for the ecosystem services. As a gesture, Ecosystem provide many eco functions and services, like providing habitats for biodiversity and uh, mitigating soil and water erosion. All these eco functions are public goods, so they, it, could, it should be compensated. However, there are one key question: How much should be paid? In 2010, after five years monitoring about the jasmine tea system, we evaluated and uh, compared the eco services between the jasmine tea system with environmental friendly production and the modern tableland tea system. We calculated the values 
of oxygen production and the carbon dioxide uptake, the nutrient conservation, the water regulation, the pest control, and the tourism. And the value of ecoservices of the German tea system is higher than the Tibbaland tea system. However, there are also some negative effects should be cut off, including the water and the soil erosion, the pollution, and maybe some food safety threats. Thus, the large value of the ecoservices could be gone. However, as for farmers, especially in developing countries, they don't care how many ecoservices could be provided from the agricultural production. What uh, the most important thing they concerned is the income, because they are poor. Thus, we also calculated the less income of the two systems, including the tea and the jasmine income. And also, there are some inputs, including the seed, the management, and the fertilizer. Thus, the large income of the jasmine tea system is higher than the tea, Tibbaland tea system. So there is a, a very interesting question. Both the light income and the light ecoservices of the jasmine tea system are higher than the Tibbaland tea system. So why? Why the jasmine tea system shrink? Maybe the return on investment could, be, could give us the reason. We calculated the return on investment of the two systems as the first table. We can say that the ROI of jasmine tea system is lower than the Tibbaland tea system because it needs more input and the more technology. Thus, we know the capital bottleneck, which restricted, restricts jasmine tea culture promotion and the PES mechanism could be designed because the jasmine tea system has a lower ROI, return on investment, and higher eco services, and the incentive could be provided to increase the ROI of jasmine tea system, and the eco services provided by the ecosystems could be seen as the outcome of or benefit of this policy. Thus, where the farmers maintain the traditional production and the system would provide more eco-services. Finally, I would like to say, as the agricultural heritage passed down from one generation to another for thousand years, there must be reasonable concept in them. What we should do is find the core and to marry the traditional knowledge with the modern technology, market, and management. The aim to conserve the traditional agriculture is to promote the modern sustainable agriculture. Thank you.